Hey, 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 it's W5HRO. Well, I thought I'd try to get this old pal 150 uh, watt mobile amplifier to work. So I'm powering it up to see if it does work. And uh, I thought I'd use this on 10 meters. I want to get the power up. I'm using that little Courier 50 watt amp temporarily. And I think this would be a better solution. And now I found when I first turned it on, the filaments all lit up. It had the uh, one tube in it, the uh, uh, six, uh, the 12 JB6A. And then this used to have 8950s and somebody put six LFQ6s in it. But when I first turned it on, what I did was, this is that other radio I'm gonna modify for 10 meters too. I just haven't got to yet. So I thought I'd use this thing to try to drive it. And when I first started transmitting, there was a, uh, there was no uh, high voltage. The filaments were all lit up and I transmit and you know, there was nothing. The relay kicks when I key the mic. And I finally hear now that thing wasn't working before, but see non loaded, I'm getting like 942 volts. And when I first started, it didn't matter where the standby switch was on or off. And I don't know if something, something went bad because I don't have a load and it shorted something. Or maybe it's because it just needs the tubes back in, but it wasn't doing it when I first started. So now when that switch is on or off, it's staying at 900 and some, you know, 40 some volts. So it's going to need a little bit of work. The only problem there is, here, this is since this is a mobile amp, it has that uh, vibrator on it. Listen, that noise is going to get picked up by the D104. So I'm going to have to put this down on the bottom shelf and leave that Dimco mic compressor turned down lower because the mic's gonna pick it up. That's the only problem. It's only on transmit, but it's because this is gonna need a little bit of rework. It's got two big 450 volt caps I have to replace. I haven't checked to see if the receive preamp is working. This was one of the early prototypes and you can tell because it only has the one switch, standby and you know off or on. And see, it looks like somebody wrote in here it was made in May of 1970. That's how old it is. But I finally, after I unplugged the tubes, it, so obviously the tubes were shorted. One of them was, whether it's the output finals or the driver. So I'm going to put, I didn't want to leave the driver in and try it with no load on it, you know. So I thought, well, let me, uh, I've, got, I've got a couple new uh, 6LF6s I was going to pop in here that I've had for a long time. And if it's this tube, I have one I put in a courier amp, but I don't have a spare. Oh, you know what I do? I have the one I pulled out of the courier amp and it was working. So I could put that one in temporarily. So I'm gonna see if I can get this thing working. I've got the supply to run it right now, 35 amp supply. And uh, I'll probably throw like a 40 or 50 amp switching supply on it when I'm done to make it more efficient. But I thought the only problem is, is that vibrator noise. So maybe if it's down on that bottom shelf in that cabinet down below and I turn the mic level down, it won't pick it up. It's going to be close. But it, like I said, it's only on transmit. The only problem is, like I said, this is one of the early prototypes and I'm looking at the schematic and you can see where they actually went in here. Some guy back in 1974, they made all these modifications. They added this zener here, probably to regulate the filaments, which I probably need to add that zener if it's not already been done, which I doubt anybody's added it. And it's got a receive preamp, and that's the thing. The, uh, the receive preamp is always on. When you click it to operate, it's always on. And they on the later models, they added a uh, two more switches and the last ones had four switches across the bottom. So you could like, one switch was to turn the receive preamp off. But what I could do is when I figure out why this switch isn't working anymore, I could put a three way, you know, I mean a three position toggle switch to where I could make like that off, you know, and standby that on, you know, and I mean in the middle with no preamp on, then when it goes to the top position, it'll be with the preamp on. I could do that. There's a way I can modify it just by changing the switch because I don't, I don't want to drill holes because if I don't get them level, it's going to look like crud and I'm just going to leave it. And not only that, it doesn't even have an on and off switch. They had a blue wire coming up out of the back labeled negative. And what you did was, I guess in your car, you took a switch on the, under, underneath your dash to turn the thing off or on so it wouldn't drain the battery. But they later added that to a switch, which I don't know why they didn't do that. 
But since I've got a supply, I can just turn the supply on or off and it won't even matter. Or a switching supply, I'll just put the switch on that and it's not really a problem, you know, right? So, big deal. It doesn't really have to, for base operation, it doesn't have to have uh, the, uh, the switch on it. But you can see they added stuff. They also added the low and higher power, the high power switch, which this doesn't have. And I don't, it doesn't need low power anyway. So, you know, they added stuff to it in the later models. And the guy labeled it, you know, March of 1974. And that's after, long after this thing was made, you know, almost three, three just one month short of three years or four years later. So, you know, that's kind of what it is. So. But I don't know if the receive preamp's working now. So I'm going to have to go in here, replace those caps. I'll probably change out these diodes maybe to like, they used 1 in 4 5s. I might bump it up to like 1 in 4 7s. I might bump these up. But luckily these transistors are still working, the, uh, the, uh, the vibrator. So, and that's loud. It's not as bad. I tell you, the ones that have the mechanical vibrator inside are the worst. Those were the loudest things when you used them in the car or used the power supply. So I'm going to clean this thing up, change out the electrolytics, see if the uh, preamp works. And if it doesn't, I'll change out. The only problem is these old PMP transistors are hard to find. I have a, I have a source for these. The only problem is they're really expensive. So this thing uses all the old style PMPs. So that's, that's the only other problem is that it could be converted, but I'm not going to do that. I'll just use a PNP if it's bad. And uh, so that, that'll help the courier receiver a little bit. So anyway, but you can see where they had ground the start. That's what that blue wire was for on the original ones. And then they later added an on and off switch on the front S1. So this, this was all these modifications and it looks like they never had an official schematic. The guy just marked it up at the factory and just did that. but. I probably need to add that zener to make sure the voltage on the filaments are is they're not 13.8 and they're right at 12.6. Because what it is is that the 12 the driver tubes 12 volts and the 8950s were 12 volt filament tubes, but it's been converted for six volt tubes over here on the finals. So they've wired them up in series, which is fine, 12.6 volts. So if it's hotter than that, it's going to need that zener. The only problem is I need to figure out is that zener going to affect you know, uh, the 12 volts on everything else. I mean, I need to figure that. I don't probably not because the high voltage will probably be the same. So anyway, that's kind of where I am on this. I'm going to try to get this thing working and use it here at the house for my uh, 10 meter uh, amplifier. And if the, with the 6LF6s, it'll probably do a slight bit more power out. So I'll probably get maybe 160 out of it. Who knows? It'll do at least 150. So that's good. So that's all for now. That'll get my 50 watts up to 150 easily. So that's all for now. This is W5HRO and the Palomar 150 mobile amp. And by, oh, by the way, this was made for a, uh, it was made for 26 megahertz up to 54 megahertz. So you could change the tap on the coil and make it work on a, on 50 some megahertz. It was designed that way. That's why there's no input tuning, which I also have to add. So that's all for now. This is W5HRO73s.